Hello and welcome, my microscopic bags of fun. This is my beginner's guide to Balloons Tower Defense 6. We've been making a ton of modded content, but now I want to switch it up and I want to go and treat you guys to an extra video. This probably won't get that many views, but for all the people that it does matter to, thank you guys so much for watching, and I, I hope you enjoy. When looking at your heroes, this is your first choice or your first thing you want to think about in Balloons Tower Defense 6. You've got four free heroes you can play with. Quincy, Gwendolyn, Striker Jones, and Oban Greenfoot. Highly recommend Oban Greenfoot for his starting prowess as a fantastic hero to begin with. If you are a little bit more advanced and you do have some of these guys unlocked, or you are deciding which one to unlock, I would suggest either Adora or Pat Fusty. Both really good heroes in their own regards, and not complicated either. They just do things. But for now, we're going to stick with Oban. In fact, I'm going to use his original skin here just for the classicness of it. And we're going to actually hop into an easy map. We're going to play it on hard, though. We're going to play just regular standards so we can get a basic idea of the game. Now, we cannot start the game off with Oban. We cannot start off with any of the other monkeys because we don't have our monkey knowledge yet. And we don't have any extra cash to start off our game. So what do we do? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to build a couple dart monkeys. Just standard old silly little dart monkeys. Why would you almost always on every single game start off with some dart monkeys? Because we can always sell them later. And they are by far the most efficient popping power tower in the game for low monies. What they do is they pop two balloons per shot or three balloons per shot if you've got the monkey knowledge unlocked. I'm going completely monkey knowledge list for you guys, which is a big, big deal in Bloom's Tower Fan 6. You don't realize it, but monkey knowledge gives you so many advantages, it's honestly a little bit insane. Once you can get your uh, uh, money for your hero, that's the number one thing you want to do. Now, the reason why we want to build Oban uh, as fast as possible is because your hero is going to level up over time. You're going to notice that what they're going to do is they're going to get experience at the end of every single round. This experience is going to level us up and make us stronger. Now, there's 20 levels to each different hero here, and that means that there is a lot of room for improvement here. By the time they reach level 20, they'll be roughly... 40, 50 times stronger than they currently are at level 1. So, by getting them up early and getting them on an early round, we get more time to earn experience. That means we're going to go up more levels by the time we get to the end of the game. Likely, probably level 17 or so by round 80, which means we're going to be powerful. Now, the next thing you want to look at is all the different options in Bloons Tower Defense 6 for you to play with. There is a lot of towers now. Uh, you know, there's six primaries, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven militaries now, five magic monkeys, and there's going to be the final four support towers here. This is where it gets a little bit complicated, because you can go with literally any option. I could tell you almost any tower and kind of make it work. But if you're talking about beginner towers, what's the easiest to understand and the easiest to play around with? Well, we're talking probably mostly the primaries or mostly the militaries, okay? These guys are not necessarily complicated, but they have a lot of different ways that they buff and combine and do different things and or have weird weaknesses that don't necessarily make sense here. So we're gonna we're probably going to end up getting a ninja later on because he's a good, easy tower to start off with. But before we get there, we're going to just get some popping power. So the next tower we're going to build is a boomerang, all right? This guy is just going to put him somewhere in the middle. If you want to get more complicated with it, you can imagine how the boomerang is going to hook around. Again, I don't want to get too complicated with it, but he's got the, the difference between uh, two different ways that he can throw. He's ambidextrous. He can throw one way or the other automatically now with no monkey knowledge. And then you're going to upgrade him. I would recommend if you're just going for just regular old balloon popping power, the best thing to get is just a nice middle path boomerang. So we're going to go one, two, and three. This is a Bionic Boomerang, and what this guy can do is pop a lot of balloons. All right, now with any upgrade that you're buying here, what you want to think about is definitely the cross path. So the way all towers can be upgraded is five tiers in one uh, specific upgrade. For example, one, two, three. We're at third tier right now. And then you can go two in one other direction. So we have to decide between the top path or the bottom path if we already have a middle path third tier. Third tier is basically the third and final decision. If you went third tier, you cannot go the other path anymore. 
So that's definitely an interesting way to think about it. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go straight popping power here. So we're going to get improved rings and glaives. So one big important thing about Blue Star Defense 6 is knowing what's going to come out on what round. And this is always going to take experience. I have roughly memorized every single round here. And you're going to notice we forgot to get camo detection, man. That's a big problem. Camo detection is a somewhat rare thing to find on certain towers. You don't automatically get it on most towers. You can buy it on a lot of them, but not all of them. The number one thing that I would say to do is if you're at all worried, you don't have that much money, 24, losing 3 lives is not a big deal. But once you get to round 33, that's when Camo Bloom start to become a big issue for us. <laughs> so always, you're going to go for a ninja. If you're just starting off this game, you don't know what you want to build, I would say go for that ninja. And there's one ninja you always want to build here, guys. This is going to be a top path ninja. So we're going to go 1, 2, and all the way up to double shot here. And then, again, you can decide which one you want to go for, but I would highly recommend you get a Seeking Shuriken. This guy is a great cleanup tower and also super-duper good against Camo Blues, which, again, is one of our biggest weaknesses right now. So Open's going to do every single type of Bloom popping power except for Camos and Purples. He's got the lead popping power, he's got all the other different types of popping power, and he's not that bad against mobs and or regular balloons. But those purples and those camos are a little bit of an issue. The ninja takes care of those major issues. He can pop purples, and he can pop those camo balloons. So that means Open's basically got no weaknesses now. The only balloon we're ever going to have to worry about ever from now on is going to be round 59. That's going to be camo leads. Now, if you guys are just starting this game off and you don't have any towers unlocked at all, and you don't have all of the upgrades unlocked yet either, the best way to earn experience is just by playing the game. There's no awesome, simple way to just be like, yes, automatic experience, unlock it all. You can try deflation out for a quick uh, uh, bonus experience buff, but honestly, just play the game. Beat them on easy, beat them on medium, beat them on hard. You're going to be earning a lot of experience. The basic way experience works, by the way, is the more you use a tower, the more money you spend on it, the more you're going to earn. So I'm not going to get any 5th tiers today, but I am going to go up to 4th tiers here, because they're honestly pretty cheap to get and not that hard to, to go for. But this is a fantastic combination for our current defense. We decided to go for a good balloon popper. We decided to use our hero, get him early so we can pop a lot of balloons. And then we decided to go for something that can pop almost all other types of balloons, camos and purples and all the other junk. There's one other t uh, balloon type that we cannot pop right now, and that's why we're going to go down into the magic section. I kind of wanted to have uh, a little bit of fun with you guys here. And I said I wasn't going to use that many magic towers, but I guess I am. Um, but Actually, we'll wait. We'll wait. That'll be around 59 thing. we got a long time before that's going to end up being an issue here. Instead, we're going to go for a military monkey. Now, I know that this is a beginner's guide and military monkeys require honestly a little bit of micro a dartling gun you're gonna have to aim him so i don't want to show you guys how to do that heli pilot you're also gonna have to move him around the screen don't want to show you guys that either monkey ace is complicated because he's going in different directions the position's gonna be weird complicated these two guys are water towers so we can only put them on water which means on this map we cannot put him anywhere hmm. interesting and last but not least though well Mortar's also a little complicated, too. But last but not least is the Sniper. Now, this is a great, great, great beginner tower right here because he can never miss, and he can hit anywhere on the screen. What? Yeah, baby! Anywhere on the screen? So anywhere besides, if you notice, if you have any walls on the screen. So in Balloon Star Defense 6, they made this game 3D. So that means if there's something in the way, a house or a windmill, or a wall, or a canyon, or a crater, or anything like that, certain towers cannot see through it. In fact, most towers cannot see through it. So, you have to watch out. In this case, on this somewhat easy map, the walls really aren't a big deal. I'm not planning on putting my sniper here, but just in case, you don't want to put a sniper here. All right, is blocking off some of our, our territory here. But if we just put him anywhere near the middle of the map, he is going to automatically reach any balloon and start popping things. Because this is a beginner's guide, this doesn't matter that much. But check this out. This is going to be a Moab here. It should be pretty easy for us. Our boomerang does the popping power. Our ninja does the cleanup. And uh, Oban's also just going to do some balloons as well. So it should be a pretty easy uh, uh, defense for us here. 
ninja cleanup. Perfect. And we got a lot of money to work with as well. Don't forget about that. The next thing you want to do is think about this sniper. All right, I'm going to give you guys a really, really, really clear and cut answer about the sniper. Almost any upgrade and almost any combo is going to be good, but the best most awesome combo, in my opinion, is going for a bottom path with a shrapnel shot. Okay, now if this guy can be on, he can just be on first. Generally speaking, snipers on strong are better, but in this scenario, we're going to leave him on first, because as we upgrade him, any upgrade that we get here is just going to make him that much better. Don't forget, this guy can be used on a lot of maps. That's what I'm going to show them off to you guys here, because we got a good starting tower to kind of clean up the balloons. we got something else that could deal with some of the camos and some of the extra balloons that are a little bit complicated for us. And then we've got something else that can hit both camos and just clean up any balloon on the screen anywhere. Having that infinite range just makes things so much easier. No micro, he just does things. So what I would recommend doing is not even just getting a shrapnel shot with semi-automatic rifle, but going all the way up to a fully auto rifle, or even if you want to, go up to an elite defender. Now you're noticing these balloons are not even making it on the screen right now, and his pop count is going up drastically. Woo! Now we know we've got a really, really, really good combo right here. Everything is just going to go for us. He actually truly has no weakness. He can pop all types of balloons. He's super duper quick. Um, and he's a powerful tower. I highly recommend it. That's all I'm going to say. Go for that sniper. Zero, two, four. Now, the way I talk about upgrades, guys, I haven't really touched on this all that much. But the way I talk about upgrades is that there's three different paths that you can go down. So if you want to upgrade a certain path a certain amount of times, you say that number. So this would, for example, be a two, three, zero. Okay, this ninja would be a four, zero, two. We've got four upgrades here, zero upgrades on this path, and two upgrades on this path. There's no real easy way to understand the upgrade paths without saying that. Every single tower is going to have its own name. Um, this is a fully auto rifle, but you want to talk about a fully auto rifle with shrapnel shot. It's really difficult to understand exactly what they're doing, right? So here we go. We've got another Moab coming out. So if you don't know what's going to come out, that's kind of where we're at right now. We don't know what's coming out. How do we prepare? It's difficult. It's difficult. Knowing that you have the good towers, the right towers, is going to help you out a lot. I would generally say the more higher tier towers you have, the better than a lot of lower tier towers. For example, I would not want to build 30 zero, zero dart monkeys. I would not want to build you know, 15 you know, two zero boomerangs or anything like that. I would rather go for more... Uh, expensive third tier towers and fourth tier towers rather than spending all my money on these lower tiers. But the big issue with that is saving up enough money for them. Some of them can be pretty pricey. Four grand, you know, I mean, fifth tier is 37,000. You're not going to afford that very easily at all, right? At all. So anyways, right now, our big boy is definitely this fully auto rifle. He's doing almost everything. We'll look at the pop counts here. 8,000 on our boomerang. We've got 3,000 on our ninja. He's doing a decent amount. We built him last. He's got 21,000 already. You can see the big difference here. Even Oban, only at 7,000 over here. Fantastic. Now, one other thing that I really haven't touched on too much is targeting. Targeting is going to be important for us, all right? I don't want to go into too much depth here on targeting. Uh, I think leaving most things, if you don't know... Leaving things on first is probably your best bet. But you do want to think about what kind of towers you're using and how they're going to do the most damage. If, for example, you have a... I'm going to delete this guy in a second. But if you have a, a catapult here, this is a top path dart monkey. We're going to go a 3, 2, 0. When we leave him on first, what he's going to do is he's going to start chasing these balloons. He's going to start missing a lot. Where if we put him on close he's probably also going to start missing a lot. He's just going to randomly shoot and just sort of, like, do whatever he wants. It's not really worthwhile. We put him on strong. He's going to start chasing the strongest balloon because usually the strongest balloon is going to be in the front because they're the fastest, generally. And then if we put him on uh, last here, though, now every single time we hit a balloon, we're going to throw down this gigantic straight line. Anytime we're hitting this guy... We're going to get more and extra popping power. It doesn't mean automatically we're going to hit every single balloon and pop them all. But generally speaking, this would be a good time to think, oh, last is actually good. For a sniper rifle, usually you want to hit the strongest balloons and take them down the multiple layers that they exist. So a sniper would be really, really good to put on strong, generally, 
except in this scenario, we want to get him up to a 0 to 4. So we're going to get rid of this guy. We have a lot of money to work with, as you can tell. This is fantastic. Now, one round that I want you to memorize, okay, is round 59. There's not that much to memorize, but round 59 is going to have your first camo lead blue. If you've got this guy, you're fine. You don't need to worry about it. But if you need to worry about camo leads at all, your number one boy is going to be your wizard, okay? You can get uh, a middle path 2022 wizard, and this guy's going to be able to pop um, a lot of bloons, but also camo leads. He's kind of your go-to guy. There are other ways to pop them, but they're honestly kind of expensive or difficult to get or just problematic overall. One other tower that's somewhat weird here that will just generally be one of your favorite towers eventually is going to be a village. Okay, this is a monkey village. It's got a range. It doesn't do any attacks. All it does is it gives buffs. So what you want to do is you want to pop this guy in range of most of your towers if possible. And then you're going to get different buffs from this guy. So we can make our radius a little bit bigger here. We can give them jungle drums, which is going to increase the attack speed of all of our monkeys. That means every single monkey inside of this range here is going to give us 15%, I believe 15% extra attack speed. Okay. So this is going to be wonderful. Why is this guy not building... Oh, there it is. There's the wall of fire. I was wondering where they were at, man. So you can tell fully auto rifle was able to take him down, but the wall of fire helped us out a lot. It's going to increase the attack speed of all of the monkeys. The middle path is going to be a camo detection awesomeness. Every single tower in the range of this village is going to have camo detection now. So realistically, camo balloons will not be an issue ever again. You should not have to deal with camos at all, but you do have to keep in mind that you do have to put people inside of the range of your village, if possible. If possible, I think, is the key. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be in the range there. I could put my sniper in the range here as well. But it does help out a lot. Another very difficult round to deal with is round 63, and this is where definitely you just have to know that like you are a good player. Uh, or, or you're an experienced player, you know which rounds you have to worry worry about. 59, 63, 76, 78. These are all difficult rounds that you're like going to memorize eventually. But for now, just spend all your money. You know, right now we're doing a bad job. We're not spending all of our money because we're trying to explain all the towers. Another great, great, great addition to this game, another third tier tower is going to be the Dragon's Breath Wizard. This guy's weakness is Purple Bloons. But we've got two other towers that can deal with the purple balloons. So that should not be an issue. It should be a non-issue now. And he does a lot of extra popping power. He's going to be great against the group balloons. And uh, finally actually do some stuff. So I haven't really touched on abilities yet. Every single tower is going to have a middle path upgrade. Once you get to fourth tier, you're going to notice this little lightning bolt right here. This is an ability. Every single tower is going to have it. Ability, ability. Boom, boom. Ability, 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 except for, uh, this guy. <laughs> That's the only one that doesn't have an ability, I believe. Uh, so, you notice, a lot of abilities here in this game. Every single one of these middle path, uh, uh, towers is going to have an ability. And your hero is also going to have two abilities that they're going to use. So, you can use, um, for example, we can throw down some thorns back here. And we can throw up some trees if we wish. Each hero is going to have their own two abilities, and each tower is going to have their own fourth tier ability and their own fifth tier ability. Generally speaking, the fourth tier ability is just a weaker version of the fifth tier, or the fifth tier is a stronger version of the fourth tier. But uh, these abilities are activated abilities, which means you have to press the button to make them happen. I'm going to stay away from abilities today because I want to make sure that you guys understand how to play the game while the towers do all of the work. You don't have to micro or manage or do anything. Just know that your blue, your towers are going to pop all the blues. That is my goal for you guys today. So now we have a lot of money here. What's another great tower to put in here? Well, again, I think, personally, I like the primary monkeys. I think they're really, really good. So we're going to go for uh, a tax shooter. Tax is going to shoot out in all eight directions here. So the best place to put them is in a big kind of cavey area. And a lot of uh, early maps are going to have a lot of like little loops like this. You definitely want to put Tax Shooter in there. The one that I would recommend is a top path, actually. And one, two, three, and four. A Ring of Fire. And we're actually going to go for the long range and the super range here. 
you can notice anytime a balloon steps in here they're getting burned to a crisp fantastic there's also another tax shooter that's really really good here and since we have the money for it i'm gonna use it i'm gonna put him let's put him together why not it's not perfect positioning but i think it'll actually be overall still good enough I'm gonna put another tax here. It's a bottom path. So a zero. Actually, we're gonna go for a two, zero, four. That's gonna be our overdrive tax here. This is another fantastic tower that you guys want to add into your game. You're noticing I'm not sticking with very many low tier towers. I'm showing you guys some of the main third and fourth tier towers that end up being very, very efficient. Once you get a couple third tier towers that can pop balloons, you can start saving up for these bigger batter balloons, uh, bigger batter towers, a lot easier. So, the way bow ups work, if you guys haven't noticed, is they've got a certain amount of health. You have to hit them with a certain amount of projectiles, or with a certain amount of things that do a certain amount of damage. And you have to make sure that they do everything um, properly. This is something you have to learn with experience. You cannot just know how much bow up popping power something has. You just have to know that the more projectiles something shoots, generally the more popping power it shoots. Uh, or popping power it does. So you're going to notice, against these Moebs, I'm not doing much damage with my Ring of Fire. It does like 3 damage per shot. But with a Tax Zone, or a, an Overdrive, against these Moebs, I'm going to do tons of damage because I shoot out tons of projectiles. But against the Balloons, I'm not quite as efficient. This is looking to do damage, but I'm not quite as efficient. You notice our pop count, a lot against the Moebs, a little bit against the Balloons. Eh, not bad. So another primary monkey you guys are probably going to worry about, or, or think about here, is going to be your Cannon. Alright, now we're going to put our cannon inside of the range of the village here. And we're going to get another key cannon upgrade. All of them are decent. Alright, top path, going to stun things. Middle path, going to uh, kill Moabs basically. Bottom path, generally good against balloons, but doesn't stun them. So we're going to go for the bottom path, a 2, 0, 4. Cluster cannon and into recursive cluster here. This is going to be fantastic against the balloons now. This is just a generally fantastic combo. A lot of third tiers and a lot of fourth tiers that just do great things. Right now, believe it or not, one of the weakest towers we have is probably our boomerang here, the Bionic Boomerang. He is not fantastic for late game, but he does get us a lot of early game popping power, allowing us to get that extra cash flow to be able to build all the rest of these towers. All right. And one other thing that I have not touched on yet is going to be banana farms. I would recommend that early players, beginner players, just kind of stay away from banana farms in general. Don't build them. Um, what they do is they're going to generate cash from, uh, uh, you spend money, you invest money into a banana farm, and it's going to give you cash back eventually. All right. Uh, it generally takes about 11 to 12 rounds to make your money back. All right. If you don't sell it. If you do sell it, it's going to take like three or four rounds to make your money back. But that means that every other round that you spend with this banana farm, in addition, is going to generate you extra cash. So, if you want to build a banana farm on round 10, you might make back, you know, almost 10 times as much money as you invested into it by the time we get to round 8. That's a lot of extra money, right? That's why banana farms are so important. If you can get them, and if you can get them early, they're going to generate you a lot of extra cash, which just makes the game just generally that much easier. But there are certain game modes like chimps. It's just really not possible. You can't generate money at all. Farms are not even possible to build in chimps, so you have to be careful with that. So uh, this is my setup. I believe that I could beat the entire game here with just the setup right here. I've got a village that incorporates most of my towers. I've given them camo detection, which I'm going to say generally, if you can, do that. Uh, especially on these beginner maps, give them camo detection with the village. Don't worry about getting camo detection from all the other random upgrades here. And then if you want to, you can get your jungle drums, which is going to make all of them shoot faster. If you go for a lot of primary towers as well, boomerangs, tax shooters, dart monkeys, cannons, you know, that kind of thing, probably want to get this primary training upgrade. It's all the blue monkeys here are going to get buffs for it. Not a crazy buff, but it's a pretty decent buff. So uh, do that. And then you can really start to own these balloons. Now, again, this is a no fifth tier tower run right now. This is all just fourth tier here. And you can see all these balloons here, even on these somewhat difficult rounds, are basically getting annihilated right around here. I mean, that's only maybe one eighth of the entire map length here. I mean, you have to go all the way through here, 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 and here. 
just to be able to pop, uh, just to be able to sneak through our defense right now. That gives us a lot of time to work with. Now, I know that this is sort of weird to mention, because I think you guys are smart people. But generally, if you're going to put your tower somewhere, you want to put your tower somewhere where you know that it can attack multiple spots on the map. For example, if I put my Dart Monkey here, I'm going to hit the Blutes right here and then never again. I have very little time to hit them, right? If I put them here, I'm not only in range of the village, but now I can hit them here, and as they come around, I can hit them one more time. Like, that's pretty nice. I get an extra bonus here. If I put them... Uh, in an even better spot. Like, this might even seem like a bad spot for now, right? But if I get him up to a little bit of extra range here, for example, if I get up to a crossbow, now I can see the balloons as they walk in. I can see the balloons as they come around again. I can see the balloons as they come around again. And I can see them as they leave. That is four different times that I get to attack these balloons. That means I can almost quadruple my popping power. Not quite exactly, but almost quadruple my popping power as putting a crossbow in this location. Alright, so that's why you're going to want to think about where you're putting your towers, because location, 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 baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, at this point, though, now you want to think about what kind of, usually, if you're going to go to up to 80 or 80 plus, you want to think about what other fifth tier towers can you start to afford. I'm not going to do it today, but I would definitely say tax zone is definitely a key upgrade you want to get for, go for. Um, uh, fifth tier, another fifth tier that you probably could go for, Ultra Juggernaut, pretty cheap, pretty easy. Elite Defender, 15,000, not even expensive at all. Will probably be up into round 80 almost by himself. That's how awesome this guy is. I wanted to build him, but I don't want to I don't want to make this too easy for you guys. All right? I, don't, I want you to work for your stuff at least a little bit. And or start to build those more expensive military monkeys. Because these guys are really, really, really helpful. All right, again, they require a little bit of micro or a little bit of management, but that makes them then just that much more powerful. All right, the last thing I'm going to touch on is the Alchemist, okay? Uh, and just generally support towers as a whole. If you're at all worried, especially near the front of the game, if you're out in a spike factory, it's a good safety net. If you're at all worried about balloons sinking through, maybe for around 24 but in a spike factory, if anything stinks through, boom, you got it covered. Uh, Engineer. Generally, I would say stay away from him. Uh, he's not that good of a tower. He's okay at best, but, like, just, just, meh. Village. Definitely get a village, but more than one village, probably starting to waste money here. Farms. Fantastic, fantastic towers if you use them properly, but as a beginner... You probably don't want to spend too much time farming because you don't know how to do it yet. You don't know when to spend your money, when to sell farms, when to do that stuff. You're probably going to end up killing yourself more than you're going to help yourself. But Alchemist. Okay, I did not touch on this tower very much because he's really, really, really weird. The way he's going to work is he is going to buff your towers. He's going to make them stronger. Especially for higher class, stronger towers... You're going to want to alchemize them. The number one tower that you're going to alchemize, my friends, is going to be the ninja. Balloon Jitsu, Balloon Jitsu 402 Ninja. You alchemize this guy, he becomes like three times, four times as powerful. Highly recommend it. Uh, the way that the uh, alchemist works is the top path is going to be the buffing path. So you're going to end up getting a Berserker Brew is going to be your buffing path. Uh, and Stronger Stim is going to stim it even further. You can cross path it with either one of these upgrades, and that will make you stronger, but not, not necessarily that much stronger. Okay. So, just a 400 generally. Use it on things that have a lot of projectiles, but doesn't shoot super duper fast. That's the best way I can explain it. But he is a little bit of a complicated tower, so I didn't want to go too into too much depth with him. Just know that he makes towers stronger. And you can kind of mess around with them to see which ones work the best. I would say, again, Ninja's probably key. Halley Pallet's good. Dartling Gun's really good. Shoots a lot of projectiles. Uh, Tax screws are really good as well. Um, but don't forget about Boomerangs as well. And that's why I actually wanted to show you guys the Boomerang Ninja combo. Because if you guys get good with the Boomerang Ninja combo, you can start doing a Boomerang Ninja Alchemist combo and get that much stronger. All right? Or even crazier, Boomerang Ninja Adora! alchemist combo 
that's where it's all at, baby. Make that happen, and you guys are going to be owning these rounds so, so, so easily. So with our current defense here, we've got $33,000 saved up. We can easily buy whatever we want here, but we know we're going to beat this game. No abilities required. We just know we're going to do fantastic here. We've got a really, really good combo, a really good set of towers here to defend these woods. Um, it's important to know that uh, certain towers have certain weaknesses. Most towers, almost all towers, can't be good against everything. They're either... Uh, they have some sort of balloon weakness, or they just don't do that much popping power in general, and that therefore they're not that uh, efficient to buy. Or they might have some other random weakness that you just don't understand. Uh, they don't work well, or they are, are not accurate, for example. This is the Zoma oh God, the highest tier balloon in the game! And we beat it before it even makes it like halfway through the map, man. Delicious. Believe it or not, our Milky Star, again, is that 0-2-4 sniper. Over 100,000 pops for us here, guys. Absolutely wonderful here. If we go into free play, we can kind of just check out our current setup here. 31,000 on this guy, 18,000 on this guy, 35,000. You can tell all of our towers did something pretty good. 35k, 43k, 43k, 30,000. Everybody had a part to play. And then... This guy, just fantastic all around because he's got infinite range, and he's been around a long time too, but infinite range, and we probably spent the most money on him overall, if you look at the sell prices. So it kind of makes sense that he did the best. But nonetheless, my friends, that's going to be my beginner's guide to Bloom's Tower Defense 6. If this helped you at all, pretty, pretty please, press that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.